Hey, what is up YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you one of my lab assignments that I had to record for my classroom. So I'm going to be in a software called RoboDK and it's supposed to be a lab demonstrating, um, I believe it's offline programming to where you program the robot in a, in a simulation before you upload it to the live robot, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and be just showing you what I did in this lab and making some notes here and there, perhaps in a voiceover. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Here we go. So first off, I've got to create a new station. And then in that station, I have to import the robot that I'm going to be using. So today's robot was a UR10E that I was using. So during this part of the lab, I was learning how to do frames with respect to specific objects in the scene. So I believe I was doing with reference to the robot arm, in this case, to make the frame um, for frame reference to. And here I was just playing around with transforming the robot, changing the coordinates, and then attaching a pink gun to the end of the um, as the end effector for the robot arm. The next thing I was doing was learning about targets. So these targets are going to locate the position of the robot at the given time that I create the target and it's going to be used to create the paths for the the painting of the object on the on the floor. So what I'm doing here is first I create a home target, then I'm going to create an approach target, and then the other one is a retract target. So those are going to be the beginning positions and the ending positions for the paths. And then so the next thing we need to do is we need to create targets on the surface of the object. Instead of manually doing it, I'm using an option called Teach Targets on Surface and it's going to manually do it, automatically do it for me, as you can see on the screen right now. At this point in time, all I'm doing is adjusting the, the targets on the surface, making sure that it is in a path that I want it to go on the surface. So this next part of the lab, we're going to be adding the program script for the end effector in order to create a path and follow the targets. As you can see on the screen, that's what I'm going about right now. All I'm doing at this time in the lab is configuring the Python for the main program script and just making sure that I can view it in RoboDK.
And then for this part of the lab, I'm just adding macros to the spray gun so that I can actually spray on or show that I'm spraying on paint to the surface. And so I don't have to manually turn on and off the spray on macro. I'm going to add a program script that turns it on and off for me inside of the program. And that's what I'm doing here. And that's the end of the lab for this part. And so the next part was integrating RoboDK into SolidWorks, being able to bring SolidWorks into RoboDK. And what I'm doing here is creating a model so I can imitate a welding path in RoboDK. So I just create a quick model in SolidWorks and that's what I'm doing currently right now. And so for this part, I'm just using what I learned in the first part of the lab, bringing in a robot arm, bringing in a welder, and then attaching them and making sure that they're in the correct positions. Here I jump into SolidWorks assembly so I can go ahead and make the part that I'm going to do the welding on. Currently I'm just making a mock table so pretty simple in SolidWorks and then I'm going to go ahead and import that piece right there and that's the part I'm going to have the welding path on in RoboDK. I realized it was kind of small so I just created a scaling factor using equations. Um, a scaling factor of 3 and I just made it bigger. So as you can see I was selecting a bunch of edges in SolidWorks to try to import it into RoboDK. However, I did run into a problem and it took me quite a bit of time to figure out what was going on because the model wasn't actually showing in RoboDK. So what I had to do was change the settings in SolidWorks to export it as an STL file rather than using the default export option and then it will appear in RoboDK. So at this point in time I noticed that I had set my origin to one of the legs of the table um, which the tutorial that I did in the beginning told me to be careful about but I forgot about it when I was modeling it, so that's something to note in the future. And as you can see here, I was able to successfully get the welding path imported into RoboDK. However, there if you look at it, there are some collision issues, so I guess that's something in the future to work out as well. But yeah, overall that was everything in the lab. That was the RoboDK and that was integrating RoboDK into SolidWorks. I actually thought it was pretty interesting, especially because once we got into SolidWorks, it kind of applied um, to things that I know how to do quite well. So that kind of piqued my interest. So I'll definitely be looking into that a little bit more. Um, but today's lab was pretty interesting. I really liked it, honestly speaking. Um, but yeah, that's it. And if you watch all the way through, thank you. And this was just the lab today. I know my professor's going to be watching this as well. So, um, yeah, this lab was pretty interesting. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs>